In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image. The Bible calls him Adam, one man who fathered us all. Now, genetics points to a scientific Adam. Microscopic clues in our DNA link every man on Earth back to one man, one common ancestor. To understand how this could be, we must discover scientific Adam's lost Eden. Enter his world and look him in the eye at an unexpected crossroads of Bible and biology. We're headed on a search for Adam. Yet three of the world's great religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, believe in one man who fathered us all. That makes Adam a key figure in the beliefs of more than half the world. Now, science offers a chance to find a genetic Adam. A single ancestor whose DNA survives in every man on Earth today. From the Inuit of the Arctic, to the Amerindians of the Amazon, from the nomads of the desert, to the businessmen of Wall Street. Spencer Wells, a geneticist with National Geographic, will lead us on a journey to identify the scientific atom and reveal what made him so exceptional that he could father all men on Earth. But how do you unravel a chain so many generations long? A chain that leads all the way to the roots of humanity's family tree. Most of our DNA is a jumble from all our ancestors. It's what makes each of us unique. There's a section of our genetic code that stays almost constant. The Y chromosome, the special piece of DNA that only men have. It's passed virtually unchanged from father to son, like a family name. The Y chromosome links the men of today with the men who lived in the past. This tiny piece of DNA allows us to travel back in time through humanity's history. Could it really link the billions of men alive today back to one ancestor? From Africa to America, all the branches on the tree join up in one trunk. The Y chromosome links men today back to their common ancestors. Most of the time, the Y chromosome is passed unchanged from father to son, like a last name. But sometimes little differences creep in. Like the spelling of a family name changing over time. Every so often, a harmless mutation appears on one man's Y chromosome. All his sons inherit that mutation. And all their sons. It marks all descendants like a brand. That's how Wells found that 16 million men are cousins. Their Y chromosomes all show the same mutations. That means they're all descended from one single man, a Central Asian super ancestor. But who was he? Wells and other genetic detectives pieced together the clues. The mutations cluster around one place, Mongolia. They traced to almost a thousand years ago. Scientists believe he must have been a man of power, who had many sons to pass on his family line. Clues all point to one man, Genghis Khan. The evidence is circumstantial, but compelling. Khan's empire stretched from Kazakhstan to Korea. He ruled a dynasty that lasted generations. His sons and their sons had the power and position to spread his Y chromosome. 
As his armies swept through Central Asia, they cut down their enemies, and often, it said, took their women. The result? More offspring with Genghis Khan's Y chromosome, and other men's lineages destroyed forever. Genghis Khan's DNA is buried with him in an unknown grave, but his Y chromosome mutations survive in his descendants today. The research shows the Y chromosome can take us back hundreds of years. But to find scientific Adam, you must trace a man from our very beginning who fathered not millions, but billions. The payoff is almost unimaginable. An Adam who may have been the first truly modern human, whose Eden we can pinpoint whose face we can reconstruct. It shows that what we look like may not really tell us where we come from, but Jefferson can lead us much further back than his Phoenician ancestor. Jefferson has a particular mutation that he shares with men from many different countries. With the same techniques used on Genghis Khan, Wells can link this mutation to another critical common ancestor. He's known as M9. He lived around 40,000 years ago. Wells' research suggests this one man could be the forefather of half of all men alive. We're getting closer to Adam. But Wells knows there are some men who do not have the M9 mutation. To identify the common ancestor of all men, he must take us deeper down the tree. But where does it go next? There are clues from beyond the world of genetics. It's evidence you can touch. Evidence from bones. Before the powerful new tools of DNA, our picture of humanity's past came almost entirely from fossils. That picture is incomplete. The oldest human fossils come from Africa, dating back millions of years. But ancient remains have been found at other sites far away. The Middle East has produced early human fossils. And pre-human remains have been found in Asia. Fossil evidence points to three regions that could be the birthplace of humankind. Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Can DNA resolve which one gave birth to scientific Adam? The old world, from Europe, the Middle East, maybe even from China. Jumbo. 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 History has created a genetic melting pot. And by taking a sample of your DNA, of your genes, we can say something about the people you're related to in the past, your ancestors. If the Y chromosomes here lead to a common ancestor for all these ethnic groups, they could lead us to Adam. If you could open your mouth. Wells takes samples from 25 local men. Great. Thank you. Okay. You could open your mouth. Where was your mother born? Zero. DNA analysis proves there are men on pate from all over the place. With ancestors from Africa, Europe, Arabia, India, and the Fertile Crescent of the Middle East. There is more genetic variation on this tiny island of pate than in many countries. And the samples show something critical. They point to a new super ancestor. Even though the Y chromosomes come from all over the world, they almost all have something in common. A particular mutation scientists call M168. In fact, men all over the planet share this mutation. Genghis Khan and the San Francisco Mongolians have it. Thomas Jefferson has it. Wells himself has it. 
Nearly three billion men share this mutation. And it means they're all descended from one man. It's a staggering thought. Genghis Khan could have fathered millions. But the man who first had this genetic mutation had billions of descendants. We're near the bottom of the tree. Could this man, M168, be Adam? There's only one problem. On the Kenyan island of Pate, Spencer Wells found one man who doesn't fit. His Y chromosome doesn't have the critical mutation. It's a crucial clue. And he's not the only one. There are others who are not descended from M168. So he can't be Adam. M-168 is far down the tree, but not its base. And the Y chromosome from the odd man out on Pate gives us the final piece of our puzzle. The man's lineage originates in East or South Africa. Comparing this Y chromosome to thousands of men from all over the world reveals a critical discovery. These mutations, originating in Africa, appear on every Y chromosome in every man in the world today. These are the universal mutations we've been looking for. We followed the DNA trail all the way to the bottom of the tree. Every branch leads to one man, one Y chromosome. There must have been one man gave rise to all men alive today. He is the ultimate super ancestor. He is Scientific Adam. One of his descendants was M-168. He was the forefather of the ancient Middle Eastern ancestor of Thomas Jefferson. He gave rise to Genghis Khan's Y chromosome. In fact, all the Y chromosomes in the world trace back to this one African man. He is Scientific Adam. Wells believes the pattern of African Y chromosomes puts his birthplace somewhere in the Great Rift Valley region of East Africa, perhaps Tanzania or Ethiopia. He thinks this is Scientific Adam's homeland, his Garden of Eden. Genetics can date the ancient Y chromosome mutations to calculate the age of Scientific Adam. Wells believes he was born around 60,000 years ago. It sounds ancient. But it means our search for a common ancestor has not led us all the way back to a time of ape men. Or even to primitive beings like Homo erectus. Compared to the billions of years of human evolution, we found Adam in the recent past. <laughs> And the heaven we constructed with strength, and indeed we are its expander. And the earth we have spread out, and excellent is the preparer. Have those who disbelieved not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity? and we separated them and made from water every living thing, then will they not believe? And 
And we placed within the earth firmly set mountains, lest it should shift with them. And we made therein mountain passes as roads that they might be guided. And we made the sky a protected ceiling, but they from its signs are turning away. And it is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. All heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming. And we did not grant to any man before you eternity on earth.